hey everyone, that's right, Dan Myers, Nick Buckler, and this is another edition of the Wrap Up. Dan, it's a great edition because we had the Super Bowl happen over the weekend. Uh, you know, we had, we're going to talk about halftime performances, what you thought, what you didn't think, what you liked, what you didn't like. And uh, it's going to be uh, dope, as the kids are saying these days. And uh, I've never done a look ahead on this uh, on the show before, so... You know, 90 episodes, it's time for a new beginning. There we go. Yeah, and I never thought, you know, jumping into the show that we'd actually be talking about Lady Gaga. But considering that she was the halftime performance, we will get into that, um, amongst other things. But, yeah, it's... What do you think about the game itself? The game was terrific. Uh, you know, early on, especially if you're a, a Pats fan, you're... Okay. But you had the, the, you know, the halftime show to look forward to. And, uh, but oh. after that, it just <laughs> picked up. Okay, hold on. Hold the phone. Okay. Regardless of how she was at halftime, if you are going into halftime, looking forward to the halftime show, oh, at least we got Gaga coming out. This is going to be dope. Well, I mean, I'd question you out of the gate. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I have very unique taste in music. No, That's fine. Not you. Yeah, I know, right? Um, wait, wait, wait a minute. Now that, now that we got up. you here, hey, you started this one. You started I it. I did. Now, now that we're here, we're just chilling kicking it like good <clears throat> friends do. Uh, you actually told the story today because we both came in clean cut. Uh, it's been a while since we've been, both of us together. And the shave, that is. Yep. And then you brought up a story about when you tried to buy a CD uh, within the last, what, three to five years. Yeah, how long has it been out? Yeah. yeah. It had been out for a couple of years since you and I were in school. Yeah, so, so maybe five years ago. Uh -huh. Which you still, five 20s. years ago, I was 26. Yeah. So. so you were carded to buy a what, what CD? All right, first I'm going to tell you all the CDs that I did buy that really I should have been carded for. <laughs> Whether it was the Eminem, a lot of rap CDs that I bought. Um, very, very explicit. We won't go into detail. But oh. uh, the, the one CD after all those years of buying, you know, over, I'm not, I'm, this is not, I'm trying to not brag, but it easily have spent $1,000 on CDs. Mm -hmm. Easy to, especially when they first came out. You Aren't know, with you, the MP3 uh, generation over here, they're not going to appreciate the full. MP3, what's that? <laughs> yeah, you're right. The Napster generation, the LimeWire. Lime wire. Morpheus. Yeah, Morpheus. That's our uh, township dog. There, there we go. Uh -huh. Good point. Yeah. You like that? Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, so with all that being said, I do have unique taste in music. I, whatever. What um, was the CD that you bought and got carded for? The CD for? I got carded for was Medical Morse. I'm going to pop first, some tags. First, it was catchy. Come on, it was catchy. Pop. Yeah, only had $20 in your pocket and you're spending 1000 on CDs. <laughs> Jeez, did you go buy some escargo too? Yeah. No, your finest know. turtleneck? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Did your dad owned MasterCard? Was that family guy? <laughs> Anyways, the game. How do we get off the beaten path and trail? It's very easy to. We don't do that here. <laughs> yeah. We're to the point. Uh, Super Bowl, Tom Brady leads his team back. D does this solidify him to be the greatest quarterback, if not quarterback, player of all time? Go. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I feel, especially that performance. Had they, well, I don't want to say had they you know, even lost in overtime, that would have solidified his you know, legendary status, but he did. I mean, you can't give up on the kid. He, he's, he's just, he's incredible. Um, to have five rings in the same organization, I think that says tons. And he's just relentless, and he's just a unique, unique type of person. I know I'm sounding like a Michigan slapping right now, but it really is. He's he's incredible. Um, the relentlessness, and then just you know never wanting to quit. Um, you can see him composing himself. You, you weren't seeing him slip up like you see a lot of quarterbacks uh, just start freaking out on the sidelines, screaming at their players. He was. Calm, collected, sitting on the sidelines. I don't know if he was you praying or whatnot. You could clearly but tell it wasn't his first rodeo. Correct. And, like, he's been there before. Yes. He's lost. Mm -hmm. If they would have played the Giants, they would have lost. Eli Manning's got his number, <laughs> which is sad to say. The Falcons were up 28-9. to nine, And Tom Brady leads his team back to win 34-28 in overtime. Mm -hmm. And the way he did it, they were down 16 points with 4.52 left. Riddle me that, people. Where are the people? You know, it was great. To, I saw this on Facebook. Uh, you know, it's great to watch Brady, but uh, if Peyton Manning would have been on the Patriots, he would have won 10 rings. Okay, let me get this straight, <laughs> okay? You're going to compare... 
Peyton Manning, who don't get me wrong, is a great quarterback, one of the best ever, to a guy who just does it time and time again. Who are his receivers, Dan? Johnny Joe, Billy Sue, Peggy, Miguel Montalago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You never know with these guys. Yeah. He does it with low grade, little five foot five white dudes in the slot. But he makes their name synonymous with winning because of the completions that are obviously taking place. He ta- one of his best receiver murders a guy and gets taken out of the NFL. What did he do that year? Won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Which brings me to a funny meme I saw. It was Aaron Hernandez sitting in court, and it says, when you realize that uh, you could have just won five Super Bowls as long as you didn't kill those three people. That was pretty funny. Uh, okay. <laughs> I saw uh, that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's like you thought you were having a bad day, and then you're like, eh, it can't be that yeah, bad. Yeah, there's Aaron Super Hernandez. Super Bowl bad, yeah. He's innocent. Yeah. <laughs> we said that. Hey, hey, you over there. Quiet down. You know, one thing I have heard, though, is, you know, what – a lot of shows, debate shows, you know, they were talking about, you know, did, did the Patriots win the Super Bowl or did the Atlanta Falcons lose it? Lose it? Mm-hmm. And it's a mix of both. I, thank you. Okay. You I'm can't take one. away from Tom Brady's comeback. There, you just can't do it. Yeah. It, absolutely not. I mean, he's the, literally the greatest of all time. Yeah. You can easily, though, say Atlanta blew everything. Just handed it to him. That huge Julio Jones catch when he tiptoed on the sidelines. Yes. And then they go three and out after that. Mm-hmm. They were at the 20-yard line, and two sacks, a holding penalty, and a fumble. Boom, you're done. Toast. Yeah. Patriots got it done. Atlanta gave it to them. Atlanta fired their D-line coach and announced their defensive coordinator would not be back. They won the NFC, and they're cleaning house. Mm-hmm. So, Now, how what, much of that is on coaching, too? I heard there's a big comparison. He's the... Uh, who is it, Dan Quinn? Yeah, yeah. Somebody else was talking about it, but, you know, he's equivalent to uh, the Lakers coach. Phil Jackson? Phil, thank you, Phil Jackson. Oh, he, what, he's a puppet? Yeah. yeah he pretty doesn't much. do anything? And if anything, you know that he's not a puppet. He's very... Vocal, very he's headstrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of it's on coaching, but the players have to execute. Right. It's all on the players. Yeah. Look at Boston. Claude Julian gets fired. One of the best coaches of all time. Mm-hmm. They fire him when they're in a playoff spot. Yep. It's the players. They're not getting it done. Now let's stick with another Boston team, the New England Patriots. Bill Belichick. Mm-hmm. Is, who's the mastermind of this dynasty? Is it Bill Belichick or is it Tom Brady? And both is not an answer. Pick one. People are saying, well, if you put Tom Brady in Cleveland, he wouldn't win. Well, no, you couldn't put, you know, the, the highest thrown person in the world and let them win in Cleveland. The mistake by the lake is cursed. <laughs> they might as well just sink in. Yeah. Just push the city into Lake, uh, whatever lake that is. Is that Huron over there? No, it's Erie. Yeah. The it worst lake in the world. Very Erie over there. Yeah. It's all like brown. I, you know what? I want to say that. You know what? I figured out where all the sinkhole sewage is going. <laughs> it's going right into Lake Erie. They're piping it right into Cleveland. And that's why their sports teams are bad. Yes. Oh, this new Gatorade flavor, Frasier Sinkhole. Oh, this is great. Mmm. Smells <laughs> great. I was walking into a local establishment over there. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Continue. Okay. Um, to I answer wanna, your question, yep. I want to say, you know, I, I, I immediately looked at the lines because the, 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 the issues we have had for the past 55 mm-hmm. years or what it, what, what it is. Um, we have, we have a, a pretty good... I don't want to say terrific or great quarterback, but he's got he's 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 got the potential and he he's shown it. But we haven't had the coaching. And with that being said, if you look at smaller teams that have not had success, but you know have potential, I want to say it's the coach. Um, yes, Tom Brady. Don't get me wrong. I, a lot of it's on Tom Brady. I mean, this this is one of those ar- this one of those questions that you can argue back and forth till you're blue in the face. Mm-hmm. But. I, Coaching, I think, is very overlooked. I agree. I think it's all Belichick. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. He's my favorite player in the NFL of yeah. all time. I have his jersey. I'm pumped. And it's not the one that was stolen, just to clear, clear the air. <laughs> all right? Although it is white. Although, you know, I did notice you parked that brand new Mercedes MAG, uh, AMG in the parking lot. Where'd you get that money from? It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> you know, I know some people. It's a lease, right? It's it's a rental. We yeah. 
It was my Uber dropped me off. And that's it. Okay. Nice, With, nice yeah. save. Yeah. Yeah, on this speed, we, could get, we got a future lawyer over here. Nice job. Um, Lead the fifth. <laughs> there you go. Halftime. Lady Gaga. Good, bad, ugly. Hot. I. Well, for, for the whole week, we've been talking about how that you know I, I don't I, I hate doing this. I don't want to pull this in there. We've been hearing she had an announcement about the announcement she was going to make at the Super Bowl. I am so glad that it didn't turn into that. Listen, this is sports. This is entertainment. You're here to entertain us. You're not here to lecture us like I'm doing right now to, to Nick. I'm so glad that didn't happen. Um, the performance was good. There was rumors of her coming out with Tony Bennett and singing. I think that really would have killed the vibe. Uh, oh, come on. Really? You want to see Tony Depp Bennett at a performance after she just jumped off the ceiling or the, the roof of the energy stadium? No, I think that would just kill the vibe. So I, I thought it was good. Kill the vibe or kill Tony Bennett? <laughs> no, I think it would have taken like about 20 minutes just to get him out in the field anyway. So. Hey, no offense. On. Tony Bennett was good, you know, 40 years ago. But Whoa, <laughs> hey, speak up into the microphone. <laughs> what was that? Insulting one of the greats. The greats, yeah. But uh, Anna, what did you think? I don't even remember what we're talking about. I'm just <laughs> upset. Uh, you know, I'm not a fan at all of her. No. But she did better than I thought. I think it was vocally very good. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I wasn't really glued to the TV. I don't think I saw one commercial. Yeah, because you really didn't miss much. Yeah. You really didn't miss much. Super Bowl used to be all about the commercials. The last the -time great commercial was, I, I think you and I agree, was the Eminem commercial for Chrysler. Um, that was the last one I can really remember getting excited over. You Refresh mean, my memory. Uh, it was when they when they started that whole campaign of uh, when from, imported from, from Detroit, Detroit, and they had the 300 M driving through the city. Oh, and Eminem, playing, like the, the rapper. Yes, yeah, so I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking the like candy. the little dude. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> yeah. That was the last one. Uh, the Sprint one was pretty good. Where the I'm guy, a funny guy. I like funny ones. Yeah. Like the Clydesdale horses and all that like sad tear jerking stuff. Not for me. No. All right, that's great and touching and all. About the evolution of a Clydesdale, is that what they're called? Yeah, very good. Uh, see, I paid attention in animal class. Uh, <laughs> to, to me, that's not meant for the Super Bowl. Yeah. It's meant for like Lifetime or Ion Television. Yeah. Soap Net. Well, that you're looking at this and you you're, you hear about the numbers increasing, going up and up, and a million dollars for a thirty second commercial. That's what you spend mm -hmm. your money on. I got it. I just something popped into my head. Did you see the thing on Facebook that lady posted in overtime when it showed the New England Patriots win with a touchdown? And she's like, look, it's rigged. Hey, idiot. <laughs> they post that in every sport. Yeah. The Red Wings win with a goal. Yeah, they're telling you if the Patriots score, it's over. It's rigged. Donald Trump made a phone call. Yeah, you're right. He, he hit up the, the, the pig skin. Hey, uh, you know, we need New England to win, all right? That it would be great. It has to happen. I got some money riding on the game. I know it. You know it. <laughs> Everyone knows it. It's great. It's so great. All right. They're going to win now. No! All right, people? Not everything is rigged. This game's rigged. Oh, this show is rigged. Oh, can you believe it? The, the Bachelor is rigged. Well, that, that might be. <laughs> All right. Bachelor fan. Oh. I mean, it used to be on when I was on the elliptical at the gym. Yeah. So I, I, they do know, have five I, other TVs you can watch. But. No, but not the one right in front of you. <laughs> right. No, I, I got know you. My, my girl JoJo. Hey, listen. A couple weeks ago, we all have our vices. Mine, I was fortunate to you went, meet one of the vices, but uh, we won't were, talk about that. You were scarfing it hard. <laughs> I didn't know when I looked at that picture who was the celebrity, though. Add that, good. Add, that, add that to the intro reel right there, too. Yeah, every time. <laughs> See, look at we we bond there over is. some strange. That's what strange sports thing. does. Sports brings people together. Yeah. One woman's reality show at a time. <laughs> right. We'll be right back. The 
Why are we unique? Well, because we're edgy. Like that? What he said. The Wrap Up with Nick Buckler and Dan Myers. Weekdays at 4.30. And welcome back to The Wrap Up, episode 90. Dan Myers, Nick Buckler. All right, before we move on, I do want to, you know, I, this, obviously this is the first time, it was a very unique Super Bowl this year. Uh, it's the first time that one actually went into overtime. And uh, with that being said, if, if you're like me or you're a big Super Bowl fanatic, you know, everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of people can uh, partake in squares. Uh, Peanut butter squares? Yeah, Super Bowl squares, yeah. Oh, yeah. Super Bowl Rice Krispie Treat style. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you make enough Rice Krispie Treats for four quarters, and you don't prepare for that. Overtime. Oh, it so, was the first overtime game in Super Bowl history. How d do you know anyone who was affected by the Rice Krispie Treat squares going into overtime and not having enough? Um, there's a couple people at my job that fortunately lost out on some money because it wasn't tec technically put out there should this go into overtime. And it just goes by the end of the fourth quarter, right? Right. Or does it do final score? Or final score. And uh, a lot of them don't talk yeah, about that. Yeah. So I don't know if you were aware of anyone, but personally, I, I did do know see a couple, on couple Facebook a fellow employee here was affected. Okay. And I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, everyone loves their, their Rice Krispie treats. So Food for can, thought. Yeah. And you know who also does? The Red Wings. Yeah. They like their drinks and their... They like their drinks thrown at them on the ice. Anyways, before I voice my opinion. Rewind. Let's backtrack. They're six points out of third, which is the playoffs. Five points out of the final wild card. They're still in this peeps bronze. They're in it. But on Tuesday night, they welcomed your favorite coach's team, John Tortorella, and the Columbus Blue Jackets to town to Joe Louis Arena for their final visit. 2-2 Two -two game in overtime. Henrik Zetterberg off the faceoff gets a stick slashed. In half. Automatic penalty. No call. Whatever, he skates to the bench, gets a new twig. Then he gets the puck a couple seconds later at center ice. Stick slashed in half again while he has the puck. Automatic penalty. You think it was called? No, it wasn't called. And what happens? Literally, they take the puck and they score the game-winning goal and defeat the Detroit Red Wings and pick up the extra point. Unbelievable. No call. When Zetterberg looked to the ref, he looked the other way and skated off the ice. Yeah. It's an outrage. And the tribe first, everybody. <laughs> Come on. Yes. But yes. how did the fans react? Trash. They showed their trashiness. They showed the whiskey tango. Oh. They littered the ice with beer. After. And any object they could find. Yeah. One guy threw his child on the ice. <laughs> it didn't happen. But. It was a Tamagotchi, but, you know, that's going back. Never mind. I didn't say that. Anyways. Uh, but I heard you had an encounter yourself. Um, I was hit in the back of the head with a beer. cup full of beer. Somebody threw $9 at him in liquid I'm form. sitting on the glass, okay? <laughs> Genius, first of all. What do you think? Do you think the beer's just going to morph through the glass? No, it's going to hit the glass and land on the camera guy. I heard it was one of the relief pitchers of the Tigers that threw that. And, he, well, he was trying to get over the boards, but, you know, clearly the talent level didn't quite make it. Is it, was that a wall joke? That was sort of a wall joke. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's disrespect, Dan. Anyways, so I'm wearing, you know, $9 worth of beer. And I turn around, I go, <laughs> didn't know which one it was. They all went running. <laughs> yeah. Which sports fans are the trashiest? Oh, well, I could go with. I hate to say, I think it's hockey. Mm. Football's up there, though. Have well, you seen some of those Lions fans? Have you seen Raider Nation? No. <laughs> no wonder why they're moving. <laughs> right. Instead um, of having these weird-looking sister-cousin moms, they're going to have a bunch of, you know, talent from Las Vegas talent Yeah. on the Strip. 
Uh, well, if, I think the, the easy one to go to, it depends, uh, is up for argument if it's a sport or not, but you could obviously go with a NASCAR. Uh, if you've ever been to a race. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, listen, man. NASCAR's <laughs> like a fine wine. The longer you like it, the better it gets. Let's go do donuts in the court parking lot. <laughs> mix in the. Get Fox on it and they'll, they'll mix broadcast it. the right it. turn every once in a while. The 41A500. <laughs> uh, that's a good question, though. Uh, aside from, in my personal opinion, NASCAR. I've seen some of the roughest hockey fans. Yeah. You know, you see that beater truck with the wings <laughs> emblem on the back? Guy comes out of the truck, he's like, oh! My favorite player, Steve Eisenman. No, it's never Steve Eisenman. <laughs> oh, it's no. it's it's like Bob Probert. Pro, we could throw him with the best of them. <laughs> God, oh God, Nick. I liked him when they never win. <laughs> Listen, I've been watching this team back before when. When back I had when teeth. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> when I had you and your spittoon never come to LCA. All right. You take your 1987 Ford Ranger with rust finish. And drive it, you know, wherever, line, far, 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 far away. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, I just pictured a person in my head too. <laughs> well, Big bushy mustache. Were you old enough? A Bud Light hat. Were you old enough to go to the? Do you remember the Junior Red Wings? Yeah, the J Wings. Yeah, the J Wings. Never went. Well, I went to a few, and let me tell you, the the crowd was a lot of fans that you know really couldn't afford to go to the games. Preseason fans. Yeah, a lot of that. Oh yeah. Don't get me wrong. The great worst. hockey. If you loved fights, that was the place to go. You could um, either do that or go down to Eight Mile and Woodward. Yeah, you could do that too. Uh, the, well, the Vipers. I mean, you had some some crazy fans there too, uh, especially towards the end. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, wing, wings fans are a little extreme. Wings fans, hockey fans can be very extreme. But I think that goes to say with any sport, it just depends what market you're in. You know, you got the the Raiders. I think one of the worst fans in in football. The the Browns, the dog pound. Yeah. Yeah, well, you say what you want. Uh, are you can be made for Yankee fans, New York fans? They're not real. That's true. You can't afford to go to your own games, you know, but that's a different story. The Yankee Stadium is a bunch of executive corporate bimbos. Yeah. $300 to go watch a baseball game? I'd rather watch paint dry. There is a terrific documentary, 30 for 30, called The House That Steinbrenner Built, and they're talking about the new Yankee Stadium and just the, the overall cost and the pricing for those seats is just, it, it's, it's hilarious. Um, it's just, it's almost embarrassing. And I, you know, I think that was one of the big, the big things that Wings fans were hoping or worried about with the new arena coming was the fact that, you know, how much are these seats gonna be? You know, they, they've got a product, an established product. They didn't product. go up that much. No, so that, that, that was that The was house good. that Illich built. Yep. How nice. Let's move on to college. Well, we, we forgot to ask a question. We ask it every week, will you ask it? Do the Wings make the playoffs? Yes. Uh, yes, yes yeah. they do. Yeah. Dan? Yeah, yeah, I want to say they do. What does it does it help them though if they do? Does it help them or missing the playoffs won't help them either? I think of it. No, yeah. if they get ninth place, it won't help. If they get eighth place, it won't help. Yeah, might as well make a run. Try to. Yeah, it's more exciting. It's the last season at the Joe. That's true. Go out with a pop, pop, bang. <laughs> College hoops, Michigan uh, routes. Michigan State, 86-57 at Chrysler Center on Tuesday. Any thoughts? Oh, I, 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 I can't believe you, I, 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 you didn't bring this up, so I was a little excited. Uh, uh, one of the Spartans, I, I forget what the name, but they were taking a page out of my, my, uh, my buddy's book, Grayson Allen. I don't know if you saw that trip. Didn't see a thing. Uh, I think it was right towards the half, the last 10, 15 seconds. Uh, he was coming back. They were running down, back down the court, and just they showed in slow motion. He just purposely trips the guy and just flies out. Nothing is done of it. Actually, you know what? I think you got a technical because they're getting blown out so so bad, uh, so early on that you could see the frustration was going on. But uh, yeah, yeah, big Grayson L move. So you know, needless to say, they were tripping. Does Michigan get in the tournament? Oh, I, I hope so. I mean, the, the optimism, optimism. You're University of Michigan. If you don't make the tournament, it's unacceptable, and you should fire everyone. I like Beeline, but come on, man. You know what though? But since Trey Burke, they've taken a step back. Yeah. That's supposed to be building blocks, building blocks. Let's go. Let's create a program. Harbaugh wiped out Michigan basketball. Well, we've been so jaded with, yeah, you know, the success that no one Michigan cares. football has. That was the record lowest attendance for Michigan-Michigan State game ever at Chrysler Arena. Uh-uh. And these are two teams battling. Yeah, you're, you're going to see a lot of powerhouses, lowest though, struggling. Ever. I mean, attendance. Look at Even when State. they were terrible. Yeah. I'm just saying. You know, we've, we brought it up before. There's a lot of, you know, especially this season, the powerhouse teams that you're normally seeing in the Final Four, the Elite Eight. 
uh, the national championship. I mean, look at Duke right now. They're You know Gonzaga, ridiculous. number one in the country, they'll lose in the second round. They yeah. don't, they play your mom university yeah. as the first, like, they don't play anyone. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So, it, so it's, it's, at least it's not just Michigan, or whether if you're a Michigan State fan, it's not just State having, it's, it's collectively these powerhouse teams Collective that are struggling. Soul. Yeah. Whoa! Heaven let your light shine down. <laughs> On that note, I think it's safe to say we've worn out our welcome on yep. this edition of the wrap up. Hopefully, you haven't tuned out yet. If you haven't, well, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in and spending your afternoon, evening, morning, or night with us. Dan Myers, Nick Buckler, we'll see you next time.